Today, I'm here to talk about driving tomorrow, a progress update on our Vision 80 journey, a 10-year plan that started in 2018 on our 70th birthday. It covers our brand, product and industrial strategy, taking Lotus into its ninth decade in 2028. As we enter the fourth year of that plan, I'm here to tell you we're on track. We've emerged from a challenging 2020 intact and are making great progress. We're going to share more details with you today of where we are on our Vision 80 journey. And for the first time, we're going to look a little further into the future as well. This year, we're coming to the end of an era at Lotus. We will send off in style our three existing sports cars, the Elise, Exige and Avora. They have served us well, icons of their generation, delivering the famed Lotus values of lightweight, ride, handling, and ultimate performance. The most important thing about the Elise, Exige, and Avora is that their legacy lives on, inspiring a new generation of Lotus cars. I joined Lotus in 1998, and uh, I've had a short break in between of about 10 years. Uh, I'm in my second stint at Lotus now. Lotus needs to achieve an alchemy first. We've done some things very, very well over the years, but we haven't been able to turn that into a sustainable business. What we need to do is find a blend of what we know and do well that will lead to broader appeal amongst a global audience that will lead to more volume and profit, which in turn leads to commercial success that is our virtuous circle. Excellent products, which equals broader appeal and higher volumes, which equals profit, which equals investment, which then equals excellent products. So as we go forward, what can you expect from Lotus? And to answer the question more specifically in the future, Lotus is performance, Lotus is intelligent technology, and Lotus is sustainability. Well, Lotus is performance. We, you know, through lightweight um, ride and handling, and then efficient high output engines, we get the performance in the vehicles that we want. Performance for the consumer is all about being for the drivers. And that's not just the people that are going on the track, that's for all of the drivers of our cars. So we make sure that we're focused on the driver, be it simplistic controls, performance, or the ride and handling that they'd like to get from the vehicle. So technology at Lotus, is something that we know we need to develop and we will be adding more and more technology to each new product as it comes out in the future. Technology is, is a, seen as a luxury um, and for us performance is not just about the core dynamics of the car but it's also about bringing up the interior, making the right offering to the customers for what they want. So Lotus in the future is going to be looking at intelligent technology. So we want, to, we want the cars to understand uh, the owners, um, be it through AI or machine learning, the opportunities there are great, but we'll be developing them with every new model, you'll see new levels of technology in the cars. So the government is talking about Global Britain and we, we want to be part of that. We think we can be leaders in that as well at Lotus. Um, we like to think of ourselves as Global Tech Britain. So the offerings of technology on the vehicles and uh, the developments that we're doing are also available to our customers through Lotus Engineering. So as a, as a group, we can develop new technologies and uh, grow together. The investment in Lotus has been large, um, and we're talking about billions, we're not talking about hundreds of millions. And that investment in product to give us the technology, the architectures, but also the facilities that we need for the growth we have planned is why we've had to invest that much. So the investment plans are in place, the product plan's in place, and we have the budgets in place for growing the technology, growing the new products. Obviously, we need to get to a point where we're self-sustaining, so as we can grow our revenues, volumes and sales, that will just lead to more products coming from Lotus. Lotus uh, ha has a global technology strategy, and the reason it's global is that we want to make sure we've got the efficiencies of working with Geely and our sister companies as well. So the technology roadmap that we have in place is defined by legislation, but it's also about customer demands. And the challenge is always how quickly we can get new technology onto new vehicles. Our technology roadmap is very strong and sets us on a, 
an exciting course for the future. Uh, we have an acronym that we use that defines what we're going to do, which is ESIP, which is Electrify, Amplify, Simplify, Intensify and Personify. So Electrify defines where we're going with our strategy in the future, as has been defined by Avaya. We will be a fully electric vehicle company uh, in the late 2020s. Before then, we have one last hurrah with Type 131 with a combustion engine, but all of our technology roadmap is leading us towards an electric future. Amplify for us is to really turn up the technology and the products. Each new product that comes along in the future will include more technology. And as you see, with the new products coming through, the technology will just be amplified that much more so it becomes part of our DNA. The technology will be simplified. If it's not simple, it's not a Lotus but the technology will be there for the driver and to enhance the ownership experience. Technology will be there as an aid to the driver and it will always be simple because we don't want to overcomplicate our Lotus. With every new launch, the role of technology will be intensified at Lotus. This work has been led by a global consultancy, Lotus Engineering. Lotus Engineering is gaining experience and reputation for technology areas including HMI, UI and UX. This is added to our specialities around driver engagement, ride and handling, aerodynamics, and so much more. P is for personify. Technology is a luxury as it creates opportunities. It gives us massive scope to personalize our products and our customer experience to give them life and identity. For Lotus, the future is what a product can do. Customize through technology to adapt to our customers' preferences and goals. Sustainability is not just about the environment and our corporate social responsibility, even though that is hugely important to us. We're at a pivot point, moving towards an electrified product range after Type 131. This journey to net zero is well underway as we're working with our energy partner, Centrica. Sustainability for us is also in a business context. Lotus, in its 73-year history, has produced over 100,000 cars. 75% of those are still in existence, so we have a sustainable product. Sustainability as a business has been a little bit more difficult to achieve. What we need to do is have a business that will last for a long time, hopefully forever, and to achieve this sustainability we need to have health and stability. In the 2020s, the Lotus business has health, stability and sustainability that will allow us to achieve our three key priorities as part of the Vision 80 strategy. These are transforming our business, revolutionising our product range and delivering results every year. We are delivering these three key pillars based on a robust strategy, a hugely talented team, a multifaceted brand which includes Lotus Engineering and with very strong backing from our shareholders, Etika and Julie. Let's take a look in a little bit more detail how we are achieving this. As you can see, we're rapidly expanding beyond our spiritual home, Hethlin, Norfolk. This is the home of our legendary racetrack, of sports cars, and will remain the soul of the brand. This is what the Vision 80 journey is about. There are four key epochs that are highlighted here. 2018, where the journey began on Lotus's 70th birthday, this brought a new air of optimism and confidence across the whole business. We increased our volumes, we increased the headcount with the backing of our shareholders, and then we broke through the operational break-even barrier in 2019. 2021, where we are today, it's the end of one era, but the beginning of a new one. The new design language, as heralded on Avaya, is percolating throughout the brand. You will see this on the new sports car that we launch in the summer. 2025, a whole new lineup of cars from Lotus. Starting the year with a new sports car, we can't wait to share with you the generation of modern, leading tech, premium performance cars from Lotus. Watch this space. 2028, taking Lotus into its ninth decade with a completely transformed business. A global business with an entirely new and world-beating range of products. And having reached our target results of exponential growth in volumes, headcount, revenue and profits, our 80th birthday will be a real celebration to look forward to and you're all invited.
Now let's take a look at Lotus's new map of the world. Hethel, the home and soul of the brand, our advanced performance center and base of the Lotus executive team. Wellsbourne, home of the Lotus Advanced Technology Center and Lotus Engineering. Gothenburg, the global center of Geely design led by Peter Horbury. Frankfurt, the European Centre of Geely Technology, GATD, led by Max Ray. China, the home of Geely and the world's leading market in vehicle electrification. USA, the largest sports car market in the world with two strategic hubs for Lotus, including Detroit and LA. <laughs> Lotus Engineering is a vital part of the Lotus story. 40 years of existence with some great products, great projects and more to come. Three key strands of uh, Lotus Engineering are technology, innovation and partnerships. On the technology side we have Lotus Advanced Technology Centre in Wellsbourne in England where the magic of uh, technology happens. Our masters of innovation and technology sit there that's where the majority of the technology work will happen in the future. And when we take on projects through partnerships, these will take place there. On innovation, uh, Lotus has always been an extremely innovative company. Throughout its history in motorsport and on road cars, we've done some really good innovative uh, tools and techniques, and that will continue to happen. We will create the perfect platform uh, for at a world, worldwide scale for startups to come up with their ideas and showcase to the world and with us come on this journey of creating future technology and innovations. And on the last but not the least, partnerships. We've been big on partnerships. We've partnered with some of the best known companies and brands out there and created some exciting products for them. Partnerships will continue to take a vital role in the journey of Lotus Engineering. Some great partnerships are coming about. Team GB's Olympic track bike is a perfect example of uh, working with Lotus Engineering and uh, hopefully will bring many medals for Team GB uh, in Tokyo Olympics. The, another example of uh, what we are doing in partnerships is the one that we announced last month with Jensen Button Extreme E-Racing Team, uh, where the team principal is Jensen himself and he's the main driver. And another example, which we'll talk about later, I'm sure, is the Renault Alpine uh, partnership, where we will be helping the Alpine brand bring out some exciting new electric sports cars in the future. For the last three years, since Geely's majority acquisition in the business, we've been telling a lot of stories about how we are building the brand and how we are bringing out new products, but we've never really given the details of what we've been working on. And today that changes. Uh, we are here to tell you that we've been investing a great deal of effort and obviously money into developing some very exciting architectures for the products to come in the future. And it's not just one architecture or two. We are developing four vehicle architectures. First one, a hypercar architecture, which we've shown Evaya hypercar on. Second is in a sports car architecture, which we will show the new sports car this year. Third is an electric premium architecture for segments beyond sports cars. And the fourth one is an electric sports car architecture where again, going beyond what everyone is doing in terms of electric architectures and when it comes to sports cars. Let's uh, go take a look at the details of these architectures. My name is Daniela Creston and I'm a Senior Program Manager here in Lotus Cars. Currently, myself and the team are work for the development of the Lotus' first hypercar. Evaya was reviewed in 2019 and is the world's most powerful production car and the first British all-electric hypercar. Many firsts and awards have followed for Evaya. Despite the challenge of the last year, restricting our ability to travel and to test Evaya in the key hot and cold climate locations. And at the some renowned proving grounds in the world, we are now pleased to report some strong progress in the completion of Evaya development. 
let's take a look. So there's a huge amount happening in Factory 3 at the moment. Uh, the, currently the Factory 3 has been repurposed as our engineering test hall. So behind me you can see a number of mule cars that have been built and they flow through Factory 3 from an engineering point of view uh, in the same fashion we'll build the cars in production. 33 years at Lotus, started here as an apprentice and have worked through um, being involved with the Vehicle Dynamics team, Technical Director of Lotus Racing and, and Head of Vehicle Engineering. My current role is looking after the DNA and target setting our cars of the future and present, making sure they drive and feel like a Lotus. My role is the Lead Vehicle Dynamics Engineer for the VIA project. So it's my responsibility to uh, make sure the car rides and handles exactly like it should do, like a Lotus. We've been obviously been limited from a physical testing point of view, so we re we've reverted back to looking at more virtual tuning, computer simulations, and looking at full vehicle simulators to help us keep moving forwards all the time. The reason we're purposed here is we do the majority of our work at Heath at the moment because of the, the current pandemic situation. We have a 2.25 mile test track on our doorstep which virtually no manufacturer in, in Britain has the luxury of. The first steps are that we want to try and get to um, get all of the active systems kind of working together and working in harmony. We've got, obviously got a lot of information and modelling side of things of how they all work and function but now we just need to make sure that we, we add our little bit of magic on top to get them all working together and, and working in sync. So it's going to involve a lot of testing overseas um, for obviously all the high speed and get all the aero working on the car as well as making use of our facilities we've got here, especially the test track and the, the local roads we've got around here to, to really make it, give it the Lotus magic and the Lotus feel. From the ergonomics and the way that the car looked, we wanted it to be, we call it everyday usable as well. So you can actually enjoy your city drive, your country road drive, and then through drive modes, we can actually then put it into track mode as well. And that's what really then defines the car. So the character can build in every location where you're driving it. This car, you know, has been designed without any constraints, you know, for time, for budgets, you know, and we've, we've pushed the boundaries on having the absolutely the, the technically best partners on the planet. And we've pushed them even further than what they do, you know, so we've got technology in this car, which is, you know, it, you'd only see in Formula One in a moment, and that's not something you can buy and apply. The best way to describe it is the, the 50 yard feel. So every Lotus, when you get into it, you drive it for the first 50 yards and you immediately feel connected to it. You feel part of the car. It responds exactly how you want it to. Um, and that's the real key and the real selling point from a Lotus point of view. Evia is an amazing experience to drive. It's uh, obviously all Lotus cars are brilliant, but Evia just takes it up to the next level. We're on target to exceed what we've called you before. You know, so we should be up and over 2,000 horsepower. We're currently working really hard ourselves and with our, our supply partners to maximise the performance envelope of the car, and that's both from a power and a torque. You know, we're confident we're going to exceed our torque capacity, um, and uh, the weight and the performance of the car, we're, we're far in excess of where we thought it would be, particularly around our track here. You know, we're going to be the fastest ever road car, um, and even uh, approaching some of the, the historical F1 cars that have been around our track. So the, the thing's going to be a real weapon. The Avaya to drive is phenomenal, but it is Formula One accelerations in a closed cockpit. So it's like a little Group C racer, but with the, the torque and the instant delivery of all of the power, all of the torque, and using the very latest toolbox of electronic aids, that you start to believe that you can defy physics. You look at a corner, we have some corners on the circuit here, and you approach them at well north of 130, 140 miles per hour and just send it straight through it but also the complexes where it's 80, 90 miles per hour, you get to the apex of the curve. And normally with a combustion engine, there's a slight delay or it's just rear wheel drive. But the Avaya actually just fires you out like a catapult. You just feel the drive from all four wheels and it just sends you up the road. And then you get the confidence with the aerodynamics and the brakes that you're just waiting to hit the brakes and go around the next corner. So it just puts you into a new level of driving. There's no car in the world that has this technology. This is a real tour de force, you know, from the, the world's most power dense battery, the world's most power dense e axle package. Um, and that's part and parcel of making a real Lotus a performance car, a lightweight car. But differing from previous cars, we've much, uh, we've designed the cockpit and the environment to be much more immersive for the driver. You know, so all the connectivity, it's all intuitively laid out. We've got haptic controls, which we haven't had before in a Lotus car. And we've got a full cloud connected server. So we know that the off-board telemetry car pretty much live anywhere in the world. That helps us support the customer. The customer can also see the, the telemetry of the car in the app and then use items like what three words to help pinpoint the location if they have an issue. Lotus is built on the pillars of dynamics, powertrain and lightweight. Um, and Avaya just takes all of those to the absolute extreme to be the most Lotus vehicle that we've ever produced.
Our sports car architecture is elemental to the existence of Lotus and contains our famed DNA from our sports car history. We do this through a mid-mounted engine and a lightweight aluminium structure. It's completely evolved to give Lotus its first new car for 2021, an all new sports car codenamed Type 131. As well as the car being all new, we have a dedicated all new production facility and today we're building our first prototype vehicles as they come off the line. Let's take a look. 131 Bridges, our past and our future and today we're really excited that we can announce the name of the car. We're now going to go over to our studio to meet our design director, Russell Carr, to give us an overview of Amira's design language. I think what we've learned from designing the Avaya really is we formed our views of what the new design language is. And obviously we'll adapt that for Amira and all the other cars that come up in the future in the most appropriate way, basically. So some of the things which are really key is getting the proportions right. We want the cabin hunkered down between the wheel arches so you get these really muscular haunches on the vehicle, almost like the shoulders on a big cat, something like that. So the car's really planted on the road. We want to have very soft, fluid surface language with some really crisp lines on the surface as well so that you've got this juxtaposition of the soft and hard. And we want everything to be really shrink wrapped around the mechanicals as well because our cars are all about the driving experience, agility, etc. And we want to express that in the form. So we want something that looks very athletic and agile. And of course, aerodynamics is really important to us as well. So we've obviously interpreted the car by air aerodynamic philosophies of Evaya, but done it in an appropriate way for a car that's in the class that the Emirate is in. Technology in the design process is really important. We, we sort of combine very classical uh, techniques like hand modelling clay together with very modern techniques. So we also machine clay using five axis milling machines. But of course we've got computer technology, we use VR and we use full screen projection as well. So part of the process that's, that you'll see around the studio is that we'll be designing the car on the computer, we'll be viewing it on a large format screen, four metres inside, we'll be immersing ourselves into virtual reality as well. And really ha having all those different tools just really helps us. It helps improve the quality of the car because we can get into looking at the assembly of panels, looking at all the gaps, all the see-through conditions to make sure all that looks perfect and is really good quality but it also allows us to see things very early on that perhaps we wouldn't have done in the past with just using a clay model. So for example, on the interior, we can go into a VR world, we can make ourselves look ridiculous putting the headset on, but with a computer model then, you can believe that you're inside a real vehicle. We sit inside our seating buck we have, we put the headset on, and we can look over our shoulder and see what obscuration we've got on the C pillar. We can see where the pillars sit, we can imagine reaching out and touching the surfaces of the, the instrument panel. So we do that all in combination with the physical model, but at the start of the process, that's really important. And then the digital phase remains all the way through to us releasing the final data. And we, we tune that data to get perfect highlights on it, perfect gapping, make sure, as I say, there's no gaps where you can look through and see something you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do. And of course, this technology of using the digital format has been really useful during sort of lockdown during the COVID crisis. We've been able to do a lot of work from home, which would be impossible with a clay model because it's not very easy to take a clay model home, but we're able to be spread around the country, all communicating, uh, you know, electronically, looking at all these surfaces and details. So it's really kept us moving. It's kept the quality improving on the car and it's kept the creative opportunities going because we can try many more things using digital technology. What we set out to do is we're always trying to do something that is thrilling. We are all about performance so the product has to thrill you, has to excite you. No one buys a sports car for for rational reasons, they have to be seduced into buying it through the, the, the emotion of the product. We want the product to be beautiful as well. We want something that stays 
attractive in the market for a long period of time. So it's got to be beautiful and glamorous as well. It has to be ingenious. We have to try new things in there, adapt technologies in a, in a new manner because we're all about looking forward. It has to be memorable as well. Um, there's lots of great vehicles out there. So we have to find things that are distinctive. So for example, on the back of the Avaya, the way that we, we do the rear lights, uh, the, the Venturi tunnels, the way they exit the vehicle, you know, that's something that people remember and it's something to talk about. Um, and then at the end of it as well, you know, it has to also be recognisable as a Lotus. So that's, that's how we think when, we, when we're doing a design language. Thanks Emma and Russell. We can't wait to share more on Amira. I will today give you some more details on the powertrain. Contrary to some speculation, we are not going down the hybrid route. Instead, we're developing a new partnership which will give us a new powertrain offering. It will be highly efficient, use cutting edge technology and of course have a high performance output. But for now, you will have to wait for more details. We will be sharing a mirror with the world on the 6th of July, making its world debut from our all new manufacturing facility here at Hethel. The reveal will be followed by a public dynamic debut at the world famous Goodwood Festival of Speed on the 8th of July. It's not a secret that uh, we have been working on entering other segments. And today we can officially say with this electric premium architecture, we will be entering other segments. But it's about taking the Lotus essence, the DNA into these other segments, giving people products that they can use in other ways, but still living the Lotus DNA. Traditionally, a car company would normally bring out products in a very organic way, creating it themselves and then spreading it out to the world. There's nothing wrong with that, but we live in a very global world these days. People in different uh, places in the world see premium or even products very differently. And we had that opportunity to create a product that was born British and raised globally, which is what we've done. We've created a product which was designed, developed, here in Britain, but with the support of our colleagues in China, Sweden and Germany and beyond, which is how we are proud to say this architecture will spin out products that are truly global. Going global is not the only thing that this architecture will do for us. This will be the architecture that will give us wings. This will take us further from anywhere we've been in our past. This will be a volume driver and we won't be shying away from creating much, much, much bigger volumes than Lotus has ever seen before. Well, this will be one of the most exciting architectures that the world will have seen. People doing electric architectures or platforms are doing it in a typical way, sometimes even ignoring what a true sports car means. But at Lotus, we cannot forget our DNA. We cannot forget what we've been doing for over seven decades now. So this architecture brings the best of both worlds, the best of EV, electric vehicle architecture, and sports cars. And this will be extremely unique to Lotus, and we'll be working with others very openly, again, through Lotus Engineering. Like all our architectures, we proudly are very open to share this architecture with anyone who would like to partner with us and work with us. And we worked very closely with one who become a partner on this journey with us uh, in Renault. Uh, with the Alpine brand, the engineers and uh, motorsport uh, technicians of Alpine will work very closely with us in uh, supporting this, this architecture. But we will be developing a car for the Alpine brand which will work as a win-win solution for both brands. And that's not the end of it. This architecture is open to be partnered with anyone out there who would be excited with a platform like this. You can imagine a Lotus engineer is a very Lotus engineer and will never change our DNA. So every product uh, in the future will have that essence of the Lotus DNA. And to qualify that, the only way I can explain is that this electric sports car architecture will be based on our true mid-engine layout. Unlike the flat floor battery packs that are being done out there, we are going to take the challenge of making the mid-engine layout work with the battery pack 
placed behind the driver. Very typically, a Lotus driver expects the ride and handling, the way the car maneuvers, the way they feel the road and every detail of their driving pleasure. None of that will go away. In fact, we'll only amplify that by creating this architecture. We have um, some amazing new products coming our way. Um, incredible new levels of technology stunning products to look at and of course this will bring a whole host of new customers to the brand and uh, we need to create the right environment and uh, demonstrate to our customers the best possible experience in both inquiry in terms of buying the product, in, in owning the product and, uh, and that needs from our side um, a huge amount of change. The industry is changing anyway. A lot has happened in the last 12 months which has moved mountains in terms of the way in which car companies and, and car retailers are doing business with their customers. Um, and we're no exception to that and we will be uh, no exception to that. The physical experience of buying such a thing as a car is extremely important and always will be. It's well documented that uh, you need to see, you need to feel, you need to touch. And buying a car online is it's a process, uh, but it's not something that that many people actually do. So a brand showcase will always be something that we will advocate. We know that we have to do business with customers in a different way over time. And we are looking very closely and will implement uh, much more of a direct transactional model. That links also to the technology that's coming in our vehicles. So a direct relationship with the car and a direct relationship with the, with the owner of the car and a direct relationship that the owner has with the car digitally as well um, it, it is key for, a, for the right kind of experience. That gives you so much more data that you can use, of course. So in terms of planning, in terms of forecasting, in terms of actually targeted marketing. Um, the data that you can get from that direct relationship gives you the ability to be absolutely bang on and far more accurate than the industry and, and, and we as a company are today. So, yep, the, the use of data is, is absolutely paramount. We're sat in the, uh, the new uh, retail design studio at Hethel. We've just recently uh, built this. Uh, purpose being is that we can show off our new retail identity concept to our current retail partners across the globe and uh, all of our future potential investors into the retail brand as well. So we're looking forward obviously to inviting um, a number of people over uh, the next few months as we're allowed to travel uh, to this environment. The retail um, identity concept is, is really designed um, as being future-proof um, and lining itself obviously to the new retail experience that we're trying to create uh, for our customers of today and the future and it's very much aligned to, to um, the Vision 80 objectives. It's a concept that, that can be adapted into a standalone showroom environment, uh, a shopping mall, boutique environment, combined sales and service uh, facility, a large brand centre. We can pretty much work with any space that one of our retail partners of today or the future gives us to work with. The concept has also been designed to be able to adapt into all those spaces but also adapt to the different markets obviously that we are represented in, um, cultural nuances obviously that sit within those markets, the different uh, levels of uh, consumer behaviour that might be there. And we're also working towards now, um, from what you see today, is a digital store adaption as well, which we hope to roll out into some major cities uh, over the next couple of years. The concept, as I said, is, is, is very flexible, it's adaptable, it's component-based. Being component-based, it's about you know, working with a space inside outwards. Um, so you know, what you see today, um, elements of this can go into pretty much any environment. And it's aligned itself, obviously, to three key areas um, of the customer journey. Um, so as the industry moves more towards um, online sales and that digital experience, we firmly believe that our physical locations still have a place to play because of the brand that we are uh, today and have been in the past. You know, we've got a lot of heritage 
that we want to leverage and, and, and utilise and, and we don't want to lose that. Simply the car there on its own showing the product for what it is which is a fantastic product range that we have today and all of, of our future products that are coming particularly obviously as connected car and the technologies and EV technologies coming in the future and how we can adapt that um, and creating technology environment around that car that can push information out to, uh, to a, a, a consumer's uh, device in a modern way. Um, again, linking it back to that digital journey. So there's always a, um, a data record for us of, of where that customer might have engaged, not only with the brand, but also with the product as well. The forum is the second area that we've created. Um, clearly, we're trying to create that forum online where you know, customers can engage, they can do their research, um, they can search for the car, they can um, evaluate their financial attributes as to affordability, uh, they can even configure a car. But you know, a lot of customers still want to engage with that human being. Um, and at that point, they may want to drop the journey and come into an environment. So we've created the forum where um, they can engage with the human being and, and take the journey to the next stage. And we're, even if that's just simply book, booking a test drive or just you know, uh, obtaining a bit more information on the product um, and availability, for example. The third area that we've created is the curated space where, again, you know, it's an area where uh, consumers can engage through technology, uh, through a digital experience, through graphics, through merchandise and learn more about the brand and engage. And it's also an area that we can bring our brand partners alive um, and allow customers to engage with that. Um, you know, as a brand, you know, we're 73 years old, we've got a lot of heritage and we don't want to lose that. And that the curated space gives us the ability for our consumers to, to learn more about what we're about and where we're going in the future as well. So as you can see, the three areas within the retail identity concept uh, enable us to bring both the online and physical journeys together in a seamless, engaging way. If you think about your daily life, um, we do all sorts of things that we take for granted today that were very different before and the analogy that, that we like to use is that of banking where some years ago now but whenever you wanted to do business with the bank it was at the bank on the bank's terms well today of course as we all know you can do that you know 24 hours a day any day of the year wherever you want that to be and actually the business and the process of buying a car and inquiring about a car should be no different. Yeah? And it's a combination of looking, feeling, seeing, interacting, at the same time having the ability to inquire and maybe even conclude the transaction, either online or offline. But as a position in the future in terms of how a customer interfaces with, with Lotus, um, it will be multi-channel and we're very clear in that direction. One of the um, things that you have to consider for the future is actually the different kind of models of ownership. And different people will want to own cars or, or possess cars in a variety of different ways. We're not really talking about a new system. We're actually talking about taking one single way of, of, of working, behaving and transacting today and simply building on that with layers of choice, hence the multi-channel term. The relationship with the brand, the relationship with the retailer remains the same and it's also well documented that personal relationships in that transaction are also very important. People like who they buy from yeah? and we're all the same. This is really important because it is you know, the front face of the brand to any of our customers, wherever they are, it's the, it's the first point of call. And it's important that we start the process of making that much more consistent. And, uh, and a Lotus experience is starting to be the same wherever it is you are around the world. <laughs>
product-led offensive. Starting this year with two new products, Avaya will go into production and the all-new sports car Amira will be revealed to the world. Four new dedicated Lotus architectures for hypercars, for sports cars, for lifestyle cars and for electric performance cars. All four products closely aligned to our brand values, performance, intelligent technology and sustainability. Global expansion. The 2020s will see unprecedented growth, not just for Lotus, but for the global automotive industry. Global growth in terms of our geography and footprints. Volumes growth, products and segments growth. And crucially, revenue growth. As part of the Julie family, we will achieve our targets, volume, sustainability and financial performance and also through multiple partnerships, both inside and outside of the group. Introducing a new era of retail strategy and customer journey. New networks, new partners, new showrooms and new brand look and feel. New customer relationships, new online direct sales supported by our network. As you can see, Lotus is for the drivers. It's driving change, it's driving innovation, and it's driving tomorrow. Thank you, and see you on the 6th of July for the start of a new Lotus era with a global reveal of a mirror. Lotus的全球伙伴们，大家好，我是路特斯冯清峰，欢迎来到路特斯Driving Tomorrow 与不断的科技创新来驱动路特斯乃至整个汽车行业的未来从单体承载式车身到侧边水箱从空气动力学尾翼到碳纤维车身这些由路特斯工程首创的技术至今仍然被F1赛车使用 航空、医疗科研、家装设计、船舶制造等领域。随着新能源时代的到来, 
，路特斯在纯电汽车与传统燃油车领域开启了全新探索。二零一九年，路特斯在英国发布了全球最大马力的纯电超跑伊瓦亚，其两千匹马力的动力总成，一千六百八十公斤的超轻车身，以超过车重的空气下压力，八百伏超级快充。都将为路特斯未来产品树立全新技术标杆，而作为路特斯的最后一款燃油跑车，即将推出的 Type 幺三幺延续了伊瓦亚的空气动力学设计语言，并在实现优异性能的同时，改良了更加低碳环保的生产模式。在产品层面的不断创新背后，是路特斯雄厚的资金支持。与商业模式的良性循环。目前，路特斯在全球范围内融资已达数十亿。英国作为路特斯的发源地和超跑研发的大本营，将持续获得巨额投资，用于路特斯国际的超跑设计和制造。我们将复兴路特斯在汽车工程领域的优势地位，同时积极拓展全球市场。我们还将不断引进外部资源。深化开放性合作。二零二零年，我们与英国华为大学成立先进工程中心，负责前瞻性创新概念研究。二零二一年，我们将与更多第三方厂家合作，联合打造高端纯电动平台。自二零一八年开始，路特斯全面推进 Vision 八零十年品牌复兴计划，全面布局。和版图扩张举措已初见成效。路特斯首款电动超跑 Evia 将于今年正式量产，新款跑车 Type 幺三幺即将与大家见面。尽管前进的路上仍有诸多挑战，但我们始终秉持着路特斯 For the Drivers 的创业初心，并立志让更多用户享受到我们的产品与服务。我们相信，只要心怀目的地。每个人都是驾驶者。接下来，我把时间交给路特斯汽车董事总经理麦特温斗先生。